think it's good to to go uh, via sea and uh, put products on a on a vessel and then get them over on, on sea. Now, it's not as simple as, as just choosing one or the other. It's as a, as a price difference. Depending on, on the value of your goods, depending on the size of the goods, depending on the weight of the goods. And all of those factors um, really come into play with respect to which method you actually work with um, and, and ship that over. Rob, you there? I can't hear you for some reason. How about that? Yeah, no, I've got you. Good morning. Yes, good morning, sir. How are you feeling? I'm very rough, but... Yeah, a bit sore, I bet. Well, my bone's still sticking up from my shoulder, so... Nasty, nasty. So, yes, we'll make sure you uh, get plenty of rest and, and get better there, sir. Are we um, waiting for Miss Wang to show up? Yes, we are. Now, what, what the issue, I, I spoke to her uh, a few minutes back, and and as you know, um, Google's banned in, in China. Because Google's banned in China, YouTube's also banned in China, and we're using YouTube Live, Google Hangouts, so it's a bit of a challenge. So she's got a VPN, uh, so she's trying to get through from the VPN into the Hangout. So we just, uh, I was just explaining what uh, the ins and outs are and hopefully what we're going to be covering. So I'll just uh, see how she's getting on again. She did say it's going to take her a few minutes. But uh, I think it will be worth it. Like I say, you know, Sarah's been working the business for, for a few years now. And, and a speciality, or their company's speciality, is, is working with FBA private label sellers. Uh, She has got a set of slides together, so we can hopefully download those later on. So we've got those to reference against. Well, Paul, you do, you've done this presentation about um, shipping before. Why don't, why don't you just go into some of that before we get started there? Um, you yeah, can go over the different kinds of, you know, freight, you know, um, the, the, the initials of all the different types of freight. And, you know, yeah, 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 like sure. That's, that's, that's a pretty good thing. Um, now, she's just turned up at the office, so she'll be uh, with us very shortly, um, So, which is good news. Um, but, it, yeah, so, some of the um, – if, you, if you're not familiar with shipping, the, like I was just explaining this uh, – you you got three forms really that we're really interested in. Express Air. Um, now, when we're talking about Express Air, Express Air, we're really talking about DHL, FedEx, and, and some of these other um, uh, freight forwarding companies or courier companies, and they will pick up your products and get them over to the states within two to three days. Now, when when we've got products up and running, and we we, uh, we arrange products to come over into FBA, by the time I actually send in my shipping plan into the supplier, it's probably about one one week, seven days, between you know, between the time I send in the shipping plan and when the products are actually live. Sometimes it can be quicker. So if you're looking for a, a quick method in order to get your products from A to B, IA China into FBA, you're looking at Air Express, uh, DHL or FedEx. Products. It's going to cost you a little bit more. Um, and the average price, I think at around at the moment, is about $6 per kilo. So what you have to do there is get, uh, get the weights worked out with your supplier. And this is uh, the net weight. Um, or the gross weight, it's just like the overall weight, so it's the packaging, the box, the carton, plus all of the, all your goods inside. So you need to work that out, and that's around six dollars per kilo. So you can quickly do the sums with respect to uh, how much it's going to cost you. Now, 
the next cheapest or the most cost effective, um, the quickest way to get there is air freight. Now, air freight is basically around four four dollars fifty per kilo. So you can see it's a little bit cheaper straight off. Uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. When I say longer, as opposed to two to three days um, travel time, it's probably going to be about a week travel time. So therefore, it's going to be about, instead of seven days from door to door, going live into FBS, probably uh, maybe a week and a half, up, up to two weeks. Okay, so it's still not bad. It's still not bad. Um, and, the, and the way that works is that's going to be a dedicated um, aircraft that is uh, a DHL um, Boeing 777, for example. And, and they basically schedule that in advance. So you have to schedule your your flight, same as what you would if you go on holiday or something like this. You have to schedule your slot in that in that courier in advance, as opposed to Air Express. Air Express sometimes that will go on a, a domestic flight in the hold and get it, just get it over quickly. But to Air Freight, they it's a similar type of thing, but it's just a freight airliner coming over just full of goods all right so that's that's one thing there um and that that's generally around four four fifty a kilo um so if, you, if you're not really rushing to get things over um then that's the best way but again there's a caveat here depending on the size and the weight okay and the the, uh, the shape of the product as well um because it's not as simple as, uh, you know what, I'll just save a little bit of money. I'll, I'll put it onto, onto an air freight. Uh, the next next thing is uh, sea freight. Now, uh, if you're ordering large quantities, obviously the sea freight is the, the most uh, the most cost-effective method of getting products from A to B, i.e. China, into, into the FBA. Now, if you're – those that haven't done it, if once you, once you create your shipping plan, you can't – decide which out of the 390 warehouses across the states Amazon have got, you don't decide where it goes. They do. Okay. Now, it just so happens that it may go into Texas, for example, because that's where Amazon decides that they want your product. Okay. So if you've got a sea freight coming in, it's it can't get close to Texas. So it's going to be on the East Coast or the West Coast. Um, depending on which way around or which air, um, which sea liner is being used or depending on where that comes into. So once once that comes in, you've got a lot, you've got an awful lot of paperwork to do. You've got a, a lot more hoops to jump through um, when you're doing sea freight. It's absolutely guaranteed. You need to make sure that you're doing this absolutely correctly uh, if you're doing sea freight. It's not an easy task. Um, this is why you need someone to help you do that. But once it gets to the port, um, it will be subject to, to inspection from um, Customs and Excise in the States. Absolutely 100% uh, anything comes in via sea is inspected. It then has to transport from that port to the FBA warehouse on a truck, lorry, or whatever the case may be. And again, it's the freight forwarder in the U.S., that will be doing their transporting. So there's a lot more working mechanisms, a lot more moving parts when you're moving stuff around via sea. There's an awful lot more moving stuff. But the price works out a lot cheaper. You know, I don't know how much the price is, but in, in average, it's around for a 20-foot container, I think about $1,200. If What you can do is you can just rent a small space within that container, and if you've got... 500 parts called a thousand parts you know the cost per part per shipping may be cents as opposed to dollars okay so it's a, it works out a lot 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 cheaper overall to send your products on the sea how long does it take well again depends on where it's going to but uh, in general if it's coming out of some like hong kong and it will go over and around uh, and it'll get into uh, probably on the West Coast. It will probably take 25 days 
Uh, if it's going to go around to the East Coast, that just means it's going to go around the bottom of the states and there'll be another maybe 10 days, five to 10 days from now. So it does take a lot longer and there's an awful lot more hoops to jump through. Um, but uh, if, if everything works out, then that's the most cost effective. Now, obviously, once you start to build a business and you are ordering a lot more material, uh, a lot more goods sort of quantity wise, uh, you, you've got to start looking at shipping because that way you'll be able to drive your price down and your margins need to go up. Therefore, I'm making it a more attractive business for you to run. Um, but to start with, what I normally do is everything goes out as Air Express, and then occasionally I'll look at air freight. Um, I don't think I've ever sent anything via sea into FBA in in the years that I've been doing it. Simply, simply because I haven't I haven't needed to, I haven't needed to. So, and, and I know people that out there have been doing this for a long time, and they they always use um, air as opposed to sea. So there's that term, and, and sometimes when you're when you're talking to your supplier, you'll hear the terms FOB, EXW, and, and some of these other acronyms. Um, don't worry, it's very very clear what they are. Okay, so the two ones you need to really worry about is FOB. That means freight on board or free on board. I think it stands for. Now, what that means is that the supply, when you order your products from your supplier, the supplier will give you a price or a quote your FOB Hong Kong, for example, or Shanghai, or wherever the nearest port is. Because it's normally a seaport that they quote that to. Now, that just entails that they are going to, including their price, the cost of the product and the manufacturing, all of the packaging, and the price to get it to the port itself. Okay, if it's X works, that's E X W. They will quote you. That just means X works. In other words, that is the price at the factory gate. Okay, so that, that's no more. That's just at the factory gate. So that's what X works means. So, and uh, it looks like we've got um, what our lovely uh, Sarah Sarah Wang. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm fine, thank you. Ah, good. I'm so, so pleased that you could join us. Uh, well, so, and, and I know I've lived in China for, for many years uh, in the past and, and be able to jump on Google and Facebook and YouTube is, <coughs> it's a challenge. It's a challenge. So, so. Yeah, uh, actually, it is, maybe it is a little slow in China to use uh, this uh, this video, uh, but I will try, and uh, maybe I will um, log out in the middle. Well, let's see how we go. Uh, we're not uh, we're not unaccustomed to technical issues. Well, we're quite used to that. Um, but uh, I live in the Philippines, and, and our internet over there is pretty slow as well. But uh, so let's let's see how we get on. Um, if you've got some slides, uh, Sarah, the best way to do that is potentially share your slides, share your screen. You can do that by, if you move your mouse around on the left-hand side, there's a little pop-up um, bar that comes up. It's the second one down, the little green screen with a little white arrow. So if you press that and call up the your slides, that'll be great. Ah, uh, okay. Ask to me to open the slide. Yes, if you've got them handy, that'll be good. So if we can watch through the slides, then you can comment on the slides as we're looking at those. Okay, I'm open. I'm, uh, the slide is opening. Hello. Yes, you're there. Okay. So if you open up your, your PowerPoint. Yes. Yeah. And then on this Google Hangouts, if you come back to the Hangouts, um, on the, mm -hmm. on the okay. left hand side, there's a little green monitor with a little white arrow. 
If you hover over that, it'll say share screen. Ah, a moment, please. So I, so I clicked the green, the green head picture. Yes. Yeah. If you click that and then click on the, um, screen sorry, you want to share I, from. But now I can only see my own picture on the uh, cell phone screen. Uh, if you've opened the slides up, you should be able to see the other slides. Failing that, if you want to send them through to me quickly, I can uh, I can share them on my end. <clears throat> if that helps. Mm -mm, moment. So I appreciate everybody' uh, patience in the background, but uh, everyone's really excited to to have you on. Um, maybe uh, I will uh, log out now to make some prepare uh, because this is a new app for me, and I don't know how to use it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, uh, so maybe uh, later I will join in uh, again, okay? Yeah, we're waiting for you. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay, Sarah, that's okay. And if you want to send the slides through as well, that, uh, that might help. Uh, which slide? The slide you sent it to me by email? No, you said you were going to make some slides, yeah? Ah, uh, you mean I made uh, uh, my slide for the shipping uh, questions you sent it to me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. I, I thought that you asked me to prepare it and uh, uh, and uh, how to say, and it, um, to tell you all this through this. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure it is by the slides, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. You know what, let's, let's just, uh, why don't we start with respect to you, you just telling us about um, your company, introduce yourself, okay, and then uh, ah, maybe we can okay. go into to the various different shipping aspects with respect to FBA, private label. Ah, ah okay. That? So I will prepare that and I send it to you again, okay? I'm sorry, I didn't do a good preparation for this one. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bye for now, and uh, maybe later I will join in uh, again. Yes, yeah, just, just join us back in. If not, do you want to just talk about it? Oh, just talk now, Sarah, that's fine. Ah. Ah, okay, so I, I just tell, uh, tell you now uh, the questions you asked me, right? And uh, I can tell right now, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If you, if you ah. want to introduce yourself, introduce your company, um, and then how, how you can help us with our, with getting products over to FBA. Okay. Okay. So firstly, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sarah Wang and, uh, I have, uh, eight, eight years experience in shipping company. And, uh, I, I, I joined this company very early and, and, and now this, uh, my company now is also, uh, around uh, 10 years. Uh, 10 years, uh, it has been established uh, about 10 years. And um, uh, about uh, four years ago, we started to do the FBA shipping because you know the uh, Amazon business is uh, more and more popular on, on, around the world, the USA and the UK. Uh, um, but of course, USA is most popular till now. And uh, I'm now in my office. Maybe I show, show, show you my office or it is not, not necessary. Um, yeah, maybe we can have a look at that later. That's good. Um, and uh, so this is my uh, self introduction uh, about my company. And uh, now uh, our company has started to uh, specialize in the FBA shaping. Uh, we signed a contract with some big airline company, and uh, we consolidated the, the goods by ourselves. You know, some shipping agent in China they just accept your order and uh, uh, to 
add their own profit and uh, send it to other shipping companies. They just earn the profit in the middle. But uh, there is something not good is that if your your shipping has some has some some problem uh, in the middle, um, they they are very quite negative because it is not a, their own operated shipping. They, they just uh, how to say communicate with you and uh, his other agent. But in, uh, but our, our company is not like this because a, we operate the process by our, all ourselves. So maybe uh, your your goods will be tagged by U.S. Custom, or maybe uh, there is uh, some other problem. Uh, we will know it first the time, and we will, we will tell you at in advance. It will be much better than the, um, all negative to listen to other notice. And uh, okay, I will now answer the questions you sent to me in the email. Okay. That's great. Okay. And um, first one is the difference between the express air, air, and the secret. And you know the express air is uh, there are four biggest company in China. It is DHL, UPS, FedEx, and the TNT. It is uh, it, is, it is called other name is Courier. Um, and, and I think all of other know the Courier. So uh, the express air, uh, they have the advantages. Uh, it's, they uh, they are very uh, they are quite and uh, you know from China to USA for example and uh, the DHL fastest is four working days it it is it's very good but uh, you know uh, they also have their disadvantage is that the cost is quite high DHL and the UPS price is very high uh, especially for some goods uh, you are your goods items you are buying is very light. Uh, it is big in size, uh, but uh, uh, but light in the weight. It, it is more exciting because it will charge by your volume weight. And about the volume weight, I, uh, maybe I I have to explain again uh, what is the volume weight. Yeah, explain that for some people that don't necessarily understand. Oh, okay. Uh, you know. Uh, um, for example, if we uh, if we ship a ba balloon, a you know balloon is light, and but it is uh, uh, it is very big when it has the air inside, and uh, you, it is very easy to understand that the airline will not charge you by its weight because it's near zero, but uh, its size is very big. So airline uh, make a calculation how to make this volume in. Uh, um, how to say to convert to the weight, and there is a uh, uh, how to uh, and uh, there is a sorry, uh, you can check it how to calculate the volume weight on the DHL official website, and uh, uh, maybe later I will write it to you because it's, it is not easy to uh, speak it is clear it's clear by the mouse. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. If you could follow <laughs> up, that would be good. Uh, but I understand. Maybe so later. Later. What uh -huh. Yeah, what you're um, saying um, is, is if, if you've got uh, a big box of feathers, for example, yeah. it, it weighs yeah. next to nothing, but the actual box itself is quite large. So therefore, the airline will compensate for yeah. that. They, they won't work on the weight. They will work on the volume. Okay, the, yeah, the yeah. size is the volumetric size of that box yeah. that is, is what you're going to get it charged on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, the second one is the air shipment. Air shipment is it, it, oh uh, the difference between the express and the air is that the air uh, the courier service and express service it is the door to door. Uh, um, if you choose DETL as your shipping way, DETL will deliver your goods to the door directly. But uh, if you choose air shipment and air shipment is it means it only airport to airport. Uh, for example, from China Shenzhen Airport to a and if you choose the air shipment, the, the this uh, shipping service is only carry your goods from Shenzhen Airport maybe to LA, LA Los Angeles Air, Airport. But you need to hire another agent in USA. They help you to clear the custom and deliver the goods to the door. That that is the difference between air and the express. That's very well described. Thank you. 
Uh huh. And a C ship, a C shipment is the uh, uh, of course it will be shipped by the uh, ship uh, the the ocean. And uh, there are also two type of cargo um by the sea freight. One is the full container, but it need a very bulk cargo. Maybe uh, you know uh, there are three container type. One is the twenty foot, twenty foot, forty foot, and forty high Q. And uh, twenty foot, uh, the capacity is twenty eight. Uh, uh, cubic meter. Uh, sure, some some sellers maybe uh, they have not so big order till now, and uh, maybe I I my order is only uh, two uh, cdm. Uh, I'm sorry, two cubic meter or four cub um, cubic meter, but I still wanted to ship by sea. So you have to con consolidate your goals with other uh, with others into a full container. Uh, is my point uh, easy to understand? Yes. Yep, I understand okay. all that. So, it, yeah. So, is um, when if I if I'm shipping, um, so if I've got a a thousand items, uh, and and it makes sense for me to go, uh, and, and ship these products by sea, but it doesn't take up a full container. Is is that still possible? Yeah, yeah, it's, it is possible. Okay, so that's uh, I know that's called LCL, uh, which is less than container load. Um, and how, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. LCL. That, yeah. So, how does that pricing work? Is it, is it? Am I am I going to save a lot of money if I'm only if I'm only going a half a container or a quarter of a container load over air freight? Yeah, sure. It will be much cheaper. And the, for the LCL shipping, sea shipping, it will be charged by the cargo volume. Uh, 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 it is how much by uh, per CBM. Uh, CBM is the uh, abbreviation of the cu cubic meter. So how how long does it take for uh, the, the um, my products to get into FBA, for example, uh, if I was going to uh. put products in the sea? Okay, and um, just now I, I, I just said that the express transit time uh, from China to USA is maybe four working days to seven working days. And uh, all, my, all my transit time I'm talking about is the working date, not the nature date, um, please note that. And uh, the air shipment may be around, uh, how to say, uh, eight working days. Uh, eight working days to ten working days, and uh, the sea shipment. Uh, uh, it depends on 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 your FBA warehouse. If your warehouse is in west of USA, it, it will be around twenty days. But it is in east of USA. It, it's longer transit time. Uh, maybe maybe around thirty five working days. Okay, that's good. Uh, when it comes to all of the paperwork and everything, uh, uh, the the bonds uh, and stuff like this. Uh. Does your company um, look after that for us? Is yeah, yeah, we can service? do. Uh, yeah, I know many Amazon sellers. They are not in USA, and they don't own their own company. Yeah, uh, in USA, and they don't have the EIN number and the annual bond. So we can help the sellers to uh, uh, to solve this problem because we have our own corporate bro broker. They have their own import company in USA, and the company is local USA company. So so they ha they have their own the EIN number and the annual bond. So when you give uh, when you uh, ask us around the ship, uh, the the goods, we will use their uh, EI and the bond. So it is no need to you to set up uh, any other about this problem. And uh, for the custom problem, uh, custom clearance in China, uh, we will also handle that. But it needs your supplier to send me the packing list and the commercial invoice. But again, that's something that a supplier can manage um, and work out. Now, I think the key thing to all of this for for, for all of us um, that are new to this or anybody that's new to this is really, really working with somebody that knows what they're talking about. In other words, someone like yourself and your company where you can hold our hands and walk us through every single, every single step of the way. Um, I think that's mm. key. Anybody that's listening, that's really key to understand that. Um, because like I was saying earlier, getting products from, from door to door, if you're using DHL is one thing, if you're going via sea, that's a totally different ball game. That really needs a lot of work and a lot of due diligence and make sure everything's correct and in place before before the the vessel leaves the port in China. Um, but it sounds like sounds like you've got that under control. 
um, sir, and, and your company have got this good partnership with uh, uh, with a company in the U.S. that manages everything for you. So that that sounds good. Is that correct? Mm, yes, yes. Um, um, our um, advantage uh, of the FB service is that we arrange the door to door. It is no need the Amazon seller to worry uh, no, to worry about any appointment in the middle because we handle all the chains, uh, all the work you know, in the chain from door to door. We can pick up from the uh, suppliers, no matter your supplier in which city of China, because you know China is big, but it has a it, it has very wonderful uh, China uh, local uh, logistic service. They can pick up the goods from any city. Uh, Mm, with their help, based on this service, and then when we pick up the goods uh, from your supplier to uh, to uh, to our warehouse, we will uh, how to say. Um, for example, you ship by the sea, we will uh, consolidate and uh, cons consolidate them, and uh, then to um, load into the container. Uh, and normally, we have a fixed fixed the container loading date. It is around maybe, around every Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, of every week. Okay, so I understand. So if I'm, mm -hmm. Okay, so if I've got um, my product uh, and I'm getting some bundles together or, or whatever the case may be, and basically if I've got two or three suppliers, you will uh, consolidate all of those products into your warehouse. Um, yeah. And, and then you will make sure that all of the products are there from my different suppliers. You will then arrange, maybe you'll repack them for me. Um, and, and again, that's something uh, that we can negotiate with you, I guess. Um, but then if it's going to go into a container, it's going to be um, middle of the week, every week, is when you load up the container to send over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I have seen some of your Facebook uh, posts we, we where... Can, we can. Mm -hmm. yeah, where where some cartons have come in and said, "Look, another terrible packaging. We've got to repack these for the for the customer." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it depends on the situation, and many time, most most of the times, the package the packages are very good, but sometimes it, it, it is really. Uh, it is really horrible, and so uh, at this situation, we will tell our clients. And show them the pictures about the bad packages, and uh, for sure we will change the, the uh, new carton for the for it. And after the um, we finish the packing by the new cartons, we also will show the pictures to my clients. Last Friday, I just finished a work for for another client from Israel. The packages is, they are quite bad, and maybe um, um, there, there are two reasons. Maybe the supplier is used very poor. Cartons and uh, the second, maybe the delivery. Uh, the oh, I'm sorry. Um, the second, maybe on the on the delivery process, the truck drivers maybe threw the packages very rude, um, which yep. also also broke the package very very badly. Okay, I understand. So that that's really good. Um, so let's talk about uh, sort of the cost of shipping, which is the next point I, I sent over to you. Okay. Uh, well, which our side and why it matters when we come to selecting the correct shipping method. Or oh, weight and the side is, is, is what is talked about, about the volume weight and the actual goods weight. And, and how to say, um, it is uh, like, it, it, it has a calculation. I'm sorry, I can't express it in, Correct English, maybe I will Google. Moment, please. So we're trying to get the uh, the question of our Sarah to, to try and answer is what's the cost of shipping and and when does it matter with respect to weight or size why does it yeah. matter when it comes to selecting the correct shipping method in other words mm -hmm. shipping uh dumbbells you know what's mm -hmm. the best way to ship that around versus something really light and airy but quite bulky um um uh, if your goose is light and uh but the bigger side 
um, and if you don't need the the goose urgent, it is sure. Uh, for sure, it will be suggested by ship by sea. It will be much cheaper. But if we, if you need the goods very urgent and only to have to ship by air, so it is suggested to ship by the um by air, and uh, then we will arrange it from the airport to to the FB FB warehouse. Uh, because this uh, this way the shipping uh, the shipping cost will be a little cheaper than express. Express is most expensive. But it's the most quickest. So it, it really depends on you guys with respect to if you're starting out uh, and it's your first order, it's your first mm -hmm. order, you're getting products into FBA, then the speed is not really of the essence. Um, it, I, I always go express anyway uh, on my first order. But like I said earlier, if you're building up and, and you're six months into the business, you're a year into the business and, and the business is growing nicely and you need to, to order a greater volume, it's, it's really time to start thinking about getting products on the sea. Mm -hmm. So, um, before you came on, Sarah, I, I was talking about FOB and, and X works. Uh, is there anything mm -hmm. else that we should understand from Inco terms? Mm -hmm. You explained about that. Uh, the FOB is mean uh, FOB and e EX work is the the trade terms uh, in the international and. Uh, and it is uh, uh, clarified the buyer and the seller responsibility. Uh, in FOB, it means your supplier will handle all of the work. Um, when the goods, uh, um, they take the sea shipment as, uh, for example, uh, in FOB, your supplier must to deliver the goods to the port. And then they will handle the documents in the port and uh, pay the cost in the, in the China port. Uh, you just take care about the, the, the part after the goods left, after the goods left the sea, how to, uh, like the Shenzhen port. Um, so and the, uh, the, the supplier will uh, ship the goods, uh, will carry the goods to the Shenzhen port and uh, um, do the uh, custom clearance in Shenzhen and then pay all the costs that occur, occurs in Shenzhen port. And uh, that is the FOB. And uh, in, in the EX work, it means the supplier just finished your order and they don't, they don't, don't do anything. So you need to hire uh, to do uh, the rest of the work for you. Uh, maybe the pick up the goods from the supplier and uh, um, arrange the custom clearance in the China port and uh, uh, then uh, uh, all of the work will be handled by your own forwarder. The, fa the supply, uh, supplier or the manufacturer, they don't do anything about this. So that's really important. So when we're trying to get a quote, um, FOB is the better quote to get. Um, so how does that affect it if you are handling everything? So, and, and we're getting um, products down to your warehouse. Well, um, for my experience, it is best that you do the EX work because in FOB, even it seems that you don't, you are doing less work than the EX work, but you know, uh, the local age and the local cost in Shen, uh, in China, uh, the hot, uh, around maybe uh, like of of a container, maybe around uh, five USD dollar. Uh, it will be occur occurred, uh, including the tracking, the custom clearance, but. Uh, your supplier will pay this cost, but uh, please don't forget that this cost will be also added in your in your uh, quotation. So you you can you can ask a supplier to put it, put you two price. Why is the FOB price and the EX work price? The EX work price will be much cheaper because they don't have to, uh, they don't add the shipping cost in the in the product quotation. Um, can you understand me uh, about this? Sorry, sorry about my my English is not so good. No, that's okay. I can understand. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. that's a very very good point. Actually, when we're asking for quotations, make sure we ask for a quotation which includes FOB price and EXW or X Works price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can now, you can compare that. Yeah. So if we're getting an X Works price and uh, we asked you to arrange shipping for us whether that's uh, dhl or whether it's uh, um, air freight or sea freight you basically got everything covered for us correct yeah yeah okay because i know that uh, 
actually, I think you said it earlier, collecting mm-hmm. products and moving products around in China is, is very, very cheap, very cheap. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. But what, what, if my, what if my supplier is up in Shanghai? Uh, how does that affect uh, if, I, if I want you to do business for me? And if you, I, yeah. I want you to arrange uh, all of the shipping, how does that work? Uh, yeah, it, uh, if your supplier is in Shanghai, we can also still can uh, arrange it. Um, uh, two way, maybe uh, if your goods is very small, not not so big order, we can pick it up from Shanghai to China. Uh, no, no, sorry, from Shanghai to Shenzhen. And and uh, if if you uh, have a full container or maybe your order is very big, we can ship directly from Shanghai port because Shanghai is also a very big seaport. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Mm-hmm. As I know, um, most of my my other clients' manufacturing is around Shanghai, uh, like Yiwu, Wenzhou, and uh, Zhejiang province. It is very popular um, manufacturing cities for the FB uh, for the Amazon orders because they are the uh, they are um, the, how to say the industry zone for uh, the uh, household items. You know, household items is, is very popular in Amazon. So um, it is very, many, many suppliers is, is, from, uh, is from the cities around Shanghai. Yes, yes, you're right. That's where I used to live. Um, mm-hmm. And I know that's, that's a very industrial area. So, yeah, all right, yeah. that's, that's good. Understand that. Um, uh-huh, okay. So I think we just covered the next question, which is how do we get products down to you? So that, that's quite easy. So we can actually send products or you arrange to collect products or if it's heavier, larger or mm-hmm. container loads, we'll just go direct from the, from the port where it's local to the, to the supplier, uh, Shanghai mm-hmm. and Ningbo or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now here's, here's a question for you, Sarah, that we get asked quite a bit when it comes to samples. Now, if, if I'm looking for a new product and I've found a new product and I'm working with um, maybe two, maybe three potential suppliers that, you know what, I, I need to get samples of these products. Is this yeah. something that you handle? Is that something that you, um, you can look after? So if I, if I want to consolidate my samples, can I get those samples down to you and you send them out? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's possible. I have I did a, a lot of a lot of such similar work um, before for my other clients. Um, sometimes when you, when you are searching for a new product and I wanted to test the quality or maybe uh, some other details, you needed to check the samples before. And uh, maybe a uh, one same sample, a uh, one same product, you, you will uh, buy from different suppliers to to check the quality, right? So we can we can collect. Uh, from them, and the the uh, the working way is also that we pick up all this. Uh, we provide them our warehouse address and ask ask them to send the same samples to our warehouse. And uh, once they send uh, the sample to me by the China Logistic Courier, there is also a tracking number. And after that, uh, I will uh, ask them to give you the tracking number and take the note. Then I will note when I received the goods. I will know this. This goods is for you, so I will um, uh, collect it. And uh, when all the samples here, I will tell you and it, uh, send you the pictures. And uh, if uh, they are very separate samples and, and a very small order, we will repack it in uh, one carton and then send it to you for, for one shipment. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm, so yeah. just, just to recap that, um, guys, if, if you've got samples and you've got uh, samples you want to get from two or three different suppliers, uh, what you can do is um, talk to Sarah, get her factory warehouse or warehouse address, mm-hmm. get your potential suppliers, send the products down to, down to Sarah, make sure there's a tracking number. Okay, yeah, you yeah. Can pass exactly. that tracking number on to Sarah, mm-hmm. and she will track yeah. all of those products. When they're there, you put them into one box and send that one box over to over to us. Yeah, Banta. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's that's really really useful. That's very very good. Uh-huh. Now, I'm working on a project at the moment. It's another question uh, with respect to storage. Uh, maybe you can explain. Um, what you do with respect to storage, but I'm working on a project at the moment where I've got some 
a, a long lead item part. So I'm getting quite a bit of um, sort of product manufactured in China. Um, and what I've done is that I've, I've basically got batches of, of products made, but some of the other products are taking me longer to produce. So I've, I've got my suppliers to send the products into a, into a warehouse. And sometimes they're sitting there for two to three months, maybe longer while I'm waiting mm -hmm. for the longer lead items. Is that something that you, you facilitate? Is, is that something you offer as a company? Well, uh, before our warehouse can provide the storage service, but uh, this month the warehouse is quite busy and it, it is full every day. So the storage uh, service is not working this, this month. It is peak, uh, peak season now. And uh, before, uh, before this, they have the storage service. They can uh, store, uh, store your goods in my warehouse maybe around one month or even longer. And uh, the storage fee is, uh, it is seven days for free. And uh, after that, it, it is uh, uh, 0.2 per kilograms uh, per day. 0.2. Two. Two, so it's 20 cents, or is that RMB? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, 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 listen, moment, please. Yeah, yeah around. Um, 0 0.2 uh, USD dollar per um, kilogram. No, 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 kilogram. It, it, this should be the cubic, uh, cubic meter. Okay. Every, um, uh, uh, yeah, um, cubic meter per day. But so it's uh, twenty this, cents per cubic meters per day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this this so storage uh, service is not uh, provided this month because the warehouse is full every day. No, no spare space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. No, that's no problems. Um, so what about any special paperwork or any of the legal aspects that we should know um, or that we, that we don't need to know about? In other words, is there anything that we really, really should be worried about when it comes to, to any legal aspects with respect to shipping products from China into America? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean the documents, right? Yeah, that's right. Documents or the certification, right? Uh, same, yeah. If if certain things need certification, then um, would you would you know about that? Uh, you mean uh, it is similar uh, wrong, uh, similar as the the bond or EIN, which is required in USA, and you wanted to know what is required in China? No, it's it's basically. Is there anything that, uh, from a shipping point of view, that we need to know about, or do you manage everything? I think you mentioned bonds. Is there any other legal paperwork that we need in place that uh, that, that, that our people or the members or anybody shipping products around should know about? Ah, oh, um, um, it, it's very easy for um, China, uh, China custom. You j we just prepared a packing list and a commercial invoice and a contract. All of this can be provided by the manufacturer of your um, by manufacturer. Okay, so basically, we need to make sure that the the supplier provides mm -hmm. the relevant information that you need. So when we when we're actually at that stage and we're ready to ship products from from the supplier. You will provide mm, yeah. us the, the list of things that we need to provide you, i.e. packing list, quantities, what the product is, and stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, sometimes sometime the, the supplier is very lazy, and uh, they don't want to do uh, such documents. Um, and uh, they, um, especially in the trade terms of, of the EX work, because he, he EX work, he, he doesn't do anything about this. He just tell me that, well, I am doing the EX work, and I just finished the production. The rest work is yours. So um, in this situation, we will ask you about the details, about the your item name and uh, unit unit price and uh, the item quantity and the um, all of the details. Then we will prepare the documents for you. Okay, so we need to make sure when we're talking to the supplier 
they they provide that information. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's most of the time, most of the times, the suppliers w would like to do to to do that because it is a very easy paperwork. So um, it's it's pretty easy to get together. Yes. Okay, so that's good. Now I, I just want to put something in. Um, uh, just throw something on the table for everybody. If um, if you are dealing with electronics for whatever for whatever reason you, you you decide to go down that road, if you are dealing with electronics, you need to make sure that you look into and investigate your legal requirements with respect to importing products into America. Mm -hmm. In particular, when it comes mm -hmm. to Bluetooth or wireless. Yeah, okay, so yeah, you yeah. Wireless, you mm -hmm. need to make sure that you're FCC certified. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your products may well get destroyed or held and yeah. destroyed when it gets to America. If you mm -hmm. do exactly. not have the relevant paperwork. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I will uh, tell some tips about the Amazon sellers. When you uh, search for the new product you wanted to sell on Amazon, uh, maybe you will contact me to t uh, to ask me uh, how about how about this product uh, in the shipping and uh, in the custom. And uh, you know, uh, I have came across many uh, many cases before that the goods. Maybe the product you are looking for is, or you think it's very good sales in Amazon, and you wanted to sell it, but you know, uh, some t some some product have the liquid oil inside. Uh, it is not a Okay, it is, it is not so easy in the shipping because you know if you ship by air, the air airline company will not accept the, any goods inside, uh, any goods with the liquid inside or oil inside, even the battery inside. It it, it is also not okay in the air shipment. You know the the uh, battery is not accepted by airline. When we take the plane, the the plane will not accept it, right? Yep. Yeah, and some some special um, custom uh, rule like, like you 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 talked about the Bluetooth just now. Bluetooth has his own. Uh, let me Google the English word. I'm sorry. <laughs> or intel uh, is in intellectual prob prob property, right? Yep. Yep. I pay uh, yeah, register. Yeah. Yeah. So you could not. You could not sell it without his uh, his agree. You must to get his uh, get a, a license or a registration license from him. Then it is allowed to sell. But uh, most of the China manufacturers they don't have this. So it is very dangerous if you uh, Bluetooth um, product and uh, uh, to when we when we ship the goods and uh, you your goods have have the blue Bluetooth logo. Uh, on the product, and uh, you must have you must have the Bluetooth license. Um, if you don't have, uh, once the U.S. is custom uh, check the goods, your your goods must be taken away and dis destroyed. Yes, and I and know the, a few people that's happened mm, to. Uh, last month, I have a very uh, my uh, my China. Uh, China clients, uh, uh, their company is doing the electronics, and uh, this this uh, they shipped around uh, two thousand speakers, the Bluetooth speakers to USA, and uh, they they know that they don't have the license. They just wanted to take the risk, and uh, maybe they are lucky not to be checked by the, by the USA custom. But the story, they are not lucky, and it, it is checked, it is checked and stopped, and. Uh, Mm, the the custom ask us to provide the certification, but the su supplier don't have. So the two thousand uh, speakers was what was destroyed. Yeah, and and U.S. customs are serious about this, guys. You know, they, there's no yeah, yeah, around. If, the, you, uh, if you get yeah. caught and you don't mm -hmm. have the certification in place, they will destroy them. Yeah, yeah. No questions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No questions. And uh, um, similar is the US USB cable. USB cable maybe it, it is a little sensitive, and uh, some others like the um, LED light. Um, um, uh, as before in our norm, uh, common sense, uh, we think that, that LED light is very um, common product. It, it's 
it's no problem. But uh, uh, we also have such a case that the LED uh, light was also checked and stopped by the USA custom because we didn't state it clear what is the use used for. If this a uh, this LED uh, LED light is used for your uh, for home, for for the home lighting, for your uh, for for your um, uh, just a normal uh, ordinary uh, home lighting, it is okay. But if the LED light is used for the um, medical, it is not okay. It is very strict. You must uh, send them a set of the certification or other things. Otherwise, this is also will be about them. And uh, this is my cases I have experienced before, so I will share this with you. And um, uh, also other things, um, the and uh, something product related in the kitchen, it is needed the FDA certification. So the uh, FDA certification. So some kitchen products need some certification. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it is very easy um, policy uh, for the for anything touch the people touch the people's skin and uh, anything um, related with the mouth, like the cup, the bowl, and uh, uh, something like, like or, or or maybe the big uh, the something is with the bakery uh, the silicon mold or something. It also uh, it is needed the FDA, and it's better that when you buy this, you you have to. Uh, it is better to check with me if if a if this needs needs the FDA, and if a a if uh, I'm sorry. If uh, it needs the FDA, and you better ask your supplier if they, they if they don't have this, then I don't suggest you to buy from them. Yeah, um, for those of you don't know FDA, FDA is the Food and Drug Administration, and any product that is going to be touching food or potentially <laughs> going yeah. in your mouth or something yeah. like that, it needs <laughs> FDA approval including yeah. silicon baking mats etc etc mm -hmm. and, so and yeah as before i also understand that maybe fd is just related with the medical equipment or something related with the medical or but uh, um after uh science last year the fda range is my uh, is more is is more and more and uh, maybe something you don't think is needed the FDA, but it surely provides the FDA certification. Uh, you know, uh, I have some pro I have some clients they are buying the product like the um, uh, like a uh, um, belt. The belt you uh, make it in, in your in your uh, el elbow or uh, in your uh, leg. The, this belt it even needs the FDA. Ah, oh, so these are the compression sleeves, the copper compression sleeves that we're seeing. Okay, I understand. And mm -hmm, they require yeah. FDA. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so, so, yeah. So my other clients, when they um, plan, they are planning to buy a new product. They, they will ask me about this because something is related with the custom. It is very important. Yes, it is. And, and I think the takeaway here, guys, is that... Um, ask and ask questions okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the, the only stupid question that you, is the stupid question that you don't ask okay mm -hmm. so make sure you ask questions and it sounds like sarah you're quite knowledgeable on all of this so yeah if we can come back to you and ask the question you you may well have the answer for us which is fantastic great mm -hmm. so which is good um is there anything else that you share with us, Sarah? I know we're taking up quite a bit of your time this morning, which I think is great. Um, you've seen some, I've seen some special offers um, within the Facebook group, which is also great. But how do, how do your special offers work and, and how do we take advantage of those? Uh, yeah, oh, special offers, sometimes we, we will promoting the air, uh, the service, such service to um, uh, like uh, in, in such situation, uh, like last, last week, I have promoted a special offer uh, by C shipment from Ningbo to FT, FTW1 uh, in Dallas warehouse because I just have one container there and uh, there is spare, spare space uh, left in the container. So I need to uh, fulfill more cargo to make 
make the container before and uh, to lower the cost. So in such uh, in such situation, I will promote the special offer. And uh, you know, uh, in um, uh, for the for the Amazon sellers, they when they create the shipping uh, shipping label. Uh, if you put the China manufacturing uh, manufacturing uh, address as the shipping from, uh, you will mostly get the warehouse in FTW1 in Dallas warehouse. There are many, many cargo go to this warehouse. So uh, we, we, uh, we normally have a special offer to this warehouse by air or by sea. And um, this week, maybe we will have a special offer by air. I will, prom I will po post it in my Facebook uh, home homepage. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So basically, what, what, uh, what we've done over the last uh, sort of week is we've included um, Sarah into all of our Facebook groups. We've got quite a few Facebook groups, is it? But uh, you're now part of all of those groups. Um, this particular call uh, series is for our, for our members, and we've got a, a private closed Facebook group for that. Um, and you're also part of that now, so I've included you in that. So please feel free to, to post any any tips, tricks, um, any special offers you have, um, anything to help us out. That'll be much appreciated. And I, and I believe that you've uh, you've started a, a, a new group, a Facebook group. Uh, Regarding shipping, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I you have invited you right, yeah, you have invited me in your uh, own uh, groups. Uh, I will sometimes post some tricks or tips about the shipping, and uh, also if I have special offer, I will also also post there. And uh, also welcome your uh, your students and members in your own uh, groups to join my group in Facebook. Okay. Um, if you can send me that later um, with everybody, so that'd be fantastic. Um, last thing, Sarah, we're getting a few questions with respect to a few comments. Um, uh, everyone's really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Sarah. Great information. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's really good. Someone's asked for, um, how do we contact Sarah? Uh, I've got some, I've got some <laughs> stuff you. I need to send over. So basically your website is um, it's Topway uh, International 40. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I'll just share, I've shared the, uh, the URL, the website URL within the chat. I'll make sure everybody gets that as well. So if you're not familiar with that, the URL or the search term is uh, topwayfreight.com. And, and there you'll be able to see uh, Sarah there on the contact details on the left-hand side, and you'll be able to read about the, the services as well. Um, I think that's uh, that's all the questions we have. We normally keep keep this to around an hour, Sarah. I think we've been going about an hour now. Um, is there anything? Is there anything you just want to just a finishing note? So, if you haven't got anything, I would like to personally thank you um, myself okay. and. Um, okay. and, and everybody from in the group has been really, really appreciate you coming on and, and talking <laughs> and sharing your... It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I would like to share all of this uh, shipping, uh, shipping uh, tips to help you save some cost and uh, save some trouble because maybe if you don't, have, uh, don't know the custom policies, maybe you will suffer loss. Well, yeah, not everybody knows uh, a lot about shipping at all. Mm -hmm. um, so good to hear uh, someone on the ground that's doing this uh, day in, day out. So I really appreciate you coming on. Oh, thank you. That's my pleasure. So that's good. All right, team, uh, if you haven't got anything else, uh, that's uh, I'm going to call it a wrap. Uh, have you got anything there, Rob, your end? No, uh, no others. Maybe no. we all. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Um, what we do, Sarah, is uh, I'll come back to you later on uh, with some, see if we can get some slides together. So I'd, I'd like to share those with you. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, in the meantime, thanks very much again, um, and thanks everybody for for joining, listening. And I hope you learned a lot from Sarah. Uh, and again, <laughs> thanks very much, Sarah, from our, uh -huh. all of us. Uh, and you have a great day there in in Shenzhen, China. All right. Okay. Take care. Okay.
Uh-huh. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day.